Good morning. It's Sunday, March 14th, and you're looking at a live view of Falcon 9 as it awaits its 6.01 a.m. Eastern Time launch from historic 39A launch pad at Kennedy Space Center. My name is Kate Tice, a senior certification engineer here at SpaceX, joining you from our headquarters in Hawthorne, California. You're watching a live webcast for our 22nd Starlink mission and our eighth launch of 2021. Today's Starlink launch is particularly special as this is the first time that we are flying a Falcon 9 rocket for the ninth flight. We reflew a Falcon 9 booster for the first time just four years ago. So to be at the ninth flight of a booster is pretty incredible and super exciting for our teams. There you've got a live view of Falcon 9. The two-stage rocket stands 70 meters or 229 feet tall. That's greater than the wingspan of a 747 aircraft. The first stage is the bottom two-thirds of the vehicle. It has nine Merlin engines that do the bulk of the work to get Falcon 9 off the ground and up into the thinner parts of the Earth's atmosphere. You can tell by the entry soot that on the first stage that this vehicle has flown before. As I mentioned, today is the first time that we'll be reusing our Falcon 9 first stage for a ninth time. This booster debuted on our Demonstration 1 mission for NASA in March of 2019 and then flew again three months later on the Radarsat Constellation mission. In 2020, it supported four Starlink missions as well as the SXM-7 mission at the end of the year. It most recently supported a Starlink mission at the end of January. Falcon 9 is the first orbital class rocket capable of reflight. In fact, 80% of our launches last year were on flight proven rockets. And this year to date, all of our boosters, or excuse me, all of our flights have been on a flight proven booster. At two and a half minutes into flight, the first stage will separate from the second stage and make its way for a, make its way for a landing on our drone ship, Of Course I Still Love You. If successful, today will mark the ninth recovery for this booster. Above the first stage is the second stage, and that has a single Merlin vacuum, or MVAC engine as we call it, and that ignites after the first stage separates. The second stage is what will carry our Starlink satellites to orbit, deploying at about T plus one hour into the mission. And lastly, our Starlink satellites are safely enclosed inside of that payload fairing that you see there. It's five meters or 17 feet in diameter, and that structure uh, is located, of course, at the very top of the rocket. The Starlink payload continues to be healthy. The Falcon 9 team is tracking no issues on the rocket. Weather continues to look great, and the range remains green for stage launch. Stage two locks are complete. All right, and there we heard the call out that stage two locks load is complete. So at this point, the vehicle is fully loaded. And we are continuing on in our countdown. Nine, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Ignition. And lift off. Vehicle switching downrange. Q. Now, in about a minute, we're going to have three events happen in quick succession back to back. 
The first one is main engine cutoff, or MECO. This is where all nine of those M1D engines are going to shut off, and that'll help slow the vehicle down in preparation for the second event, stage separation. As the name would suggest, this is when the first and second stages will separate from, the se from each other. The first stage will start its way back to Earth. Next, chill now. We heard the chill in. We're flowing some super chilled liquid oxygen into the turbo pumps on that second stage engine. Uh, the first stage after stage separation will make its way back to Earth. Second stage will continue its journey with the third event, SES-1 or second engine start one. This is where MVAC will light up and begin to propel second stage along with the Starlink satellites into orbit. And main engine cutoff will be coming up in 10 seconds. Everything continues to look nominal there with that vehicle trajectory. And Miko, stage separation confirmed. All right, there on your screen. Ignition and throttle complete. As the MVAC nozzle begins to develop that bright glow, we can see that all three events, like I said, quick succession. Um, on the left-hand side of your screen, we have the first stage. Uh, in the background behind the first stage, I absolutely love this view, we got some night lights of the Space Coast behind it. Uh, the first stage is actually... Fairing separation confirmed. Now uh, there we heard the call out for fairing sep, and we can see that stack of Starlink satellites there. Great views. Everything looks nominal there with our second stage. As it heads towards its targeted drop-off orbit, first stage is going to execute two burns in order to make its way back to Earth. If you look closely, you can still see the night lights of the Space Coast there in the upper left corner. The first of the two burns that first stage will execute is the entry burn where three of the M1D engines will reignite. This will help to slow the stage down as it re-enters the upper part of the Earth's atmosphere. The second burn is the landing burn. This is a single engine burn that brings the vehicle speed that brings the speed down rapidly in order to land on the drone ship. So there are both shots that we have on screen um, are actually both of the of the second stage. We can see the large plume on the left hand side. Everything continues to look nominal. So there we can see that second stage uh, vacuum engine. This engine will power the second stage to its targeted orbit. What you can't see on screen is the other end of the second stage where the 60 Starlink satellites are stacked and awaiting deployment later on in our mission this morning. Starlink satellites operate over 60 times closer to the Earth than traditional satellites, resulting in much lower latency. For those of you that might not be familiar, latency is the time that it takes to send data from one point to the next. So in this context, it's the time it takes to send data- Second stage is following a nominal trajectory. Good call out there for nominal trajectory for second stage. Um, so latency, in this context, it's the time that it takes to send data from the ground to the satellite and then back. When satellites are far away from Earth, latency is high. We're talking 550 milliseconds or more. This prevents activities like video calls and online gaming. When satellites are close to Earth, like the Starlink satellites, latency is low more like 20 to 40 milliseconds versus 550 milliseconds. This enables video calls and online gaming with an experience similar to fiber or cable. And because Starlink is a satellite network, you're not limited by ground infrastructure. That's one of the main reasons why people who live in rural or remote areas don't have access to high-speed internet, because running the fiber or the cable necessary to get them connected is just too expensive. The Starlink kit comes with everything you need to get connected, including your Starlink, also known as Dishy McFlatface, your Wi-Fi router, power supply, and cabling. The hardware comes pre-connected in the box, so all you have to do is download the Starlink app, plug it in, find the best install installation spot for your Dishy, and you can get connected Stage to FTS is saved. You can get connected to the internet in a matter of minutes. Startup. Stage one entry burn startup. And there we can see on your screen startup of that 
first of two burns, the entry burn. This lasts 20 seconds. As I mentioned earlier, we have reignited three of the nine Merlin engines at the base of the first stage vehicle. Stage one entry burn shut down. And shut down of those three engines. So the reason we perform the entry burn is we want to slow the first stage down as it re-enters the Earth's atmosphere. As you can tell by the energy there on the grid fins, we can see that it's going pretty fast and we want to slow the velocity down as it re-enters the atmosphere. Second stage is on a nominal trajectory. Heard the call out there that second stage is on a nominal trajectory. The next event that we have coming up will be the landing burn for the first stage. As the name suggests, uh, this is when we'll be attempting to land on our drone ship, Of Course I Still Love You, which is currently holding position uh, a, hundred, a couple hundred miles off the coast of Florida in the Atlantic. A couple hundred miles off the coast of Florida in the Atlantic Ocean. Everything continuing to look good with the second stage and our Starlink satellites. Also signal stage one, Cape Canaveral expected. Stage one landing burn. So we heard the call out that the landing burn for stage one has begun. We can start to see the plume there on our drone ship cam on the left hand side of your screen. Good morning, it's Wednesday, March 24th, and you're looking at a live view of Falcon 9 as it awaits its 4.28 a.m. Eastern Time launch from Pad 40 at Cape Canaveral Air Force Station. Hello from SpaceX's headquarters in Hawthorne, California. My name is Andy Tran, and I'm a production supervisor here at SpaceX. You're watching a live view of our webcast, a uh, live webcast for our 23rd Starlink mission and our ninth mission of 2021. Starlink is a constellation of satellites that can provide high-speed, low-latency internet all over the globe, particularly in remote areas where connectivity is limited or completely unavailable. Today, roughly half of the world's population, or nearly 3.6 billion people, don't have access to the internet. If you've been following our Starlink's progress, you'll know that Starlink beta service is now available in the United States, Canada, the United Kingdom, Western Germany, and the South Island in New Zealand. As we launch more satellites, install more ground stations, and improve our networking software, data speed, latency, and uptime will all improve dramatically. And with every Starlink launch, we get closer to our goal of nearly global coverage of the populated world. And speaking of goals, at the beginning of March, we completed our third high altitude flight test of a Starship prototype and are anticipating the next Starship zero number 11 flight test in the days ahead. I'll share some of these highlights a bit later in the webcast. Currently, we're just under 10 minutes from liftoff. Uh, all systems are go for an on-time liftoff this morning. Uh, once Falcon 9 lifts off of the ground, our first and second stages will separate about two and a half minutes into flight. The first stage will then return back to Earth to attempt its sixth landing, this time on our drone ship, Of Course I Still Love You. And while that's happening, our second stage will continue on its journey. In order to get our satellites to the intended orbit today, we have two coast phases and we'll be re we'll be igniting our Merlin vacuum engine twice with the deployment of our Starlink satellites uh, around the T plus one hour and four minute mark. We're just uh, heading towards that T minus nine minute mark. All systems again are, all, are go for an on-time liftoff this morning. With that, let's take a closer look at the rocket that you see there on screen. This is a live view of Falcon 9, our two-stage liquid field rocket. It's 70 meters tall, greater than the wingspan of a 747 aircraft. Uh, we, are flying today's, we are flying today's booster for a sixth time. This rocket first flew on the GPS-3 Space Vehicle 3 mission in November of last year, followed by two Starlink missions. In 2021, it supported the Turksat 5A mission in January and another Starlink mission in February.
into orbit. In just a few seconds here, we should be vehicle is supersonic. hitting max Q or maximum aerodynamic pressure. Vehicle is now experiencing maximum aerodynamic pressure. And there's the call up for max Q. In about a minute, we have three events happening back to back. First up is main engine cutoff, also known as MECO. This is where all nine M1D engines shut off to slow the vehicle down in preparation for stage and separation. Has begun. The second event is stage separation. This is where the first and second stage will separate from one another, with the first stage making its way back to Earth for a landing attempt, while the second stage continues its journey with the third event, second engine start one, also known as SES-1. This is where the single Merlin vacuum engine on the second stage will light up and propel the second stage along with the Starlink satellites into orbit. Again, that is main engine cut off, followed by stage separation, then second engine start one. And the first of those events should be happening in about 20 seconds. Both views on screen right now are of the first stage. The left is from the top of the first stage and the right is a tracking shot from the ground of Falcon 9. Main engine cutoff. Stage separation confirmed. And we had successful main engine cutoff, stage separation, and you can see on the right hand side of your screen the engine on the second Both stage has successfully started up. Trajectories. Now we're expecting fairing deploy here in a couple of seconds. separation confirmed and off come the fairing halves that call out and the visual confirmation on your screen means that we've had successful fairing deploy as a reminder this was the second flight for each of the fairing halves and we're going to be attempting to recover the fairing halves again via a wet recovery